Thank the chair for your kind welcome earlier and the ranking member as well. Um, Mr. Syed, welcome. Again, it's uh, good to meet you and good to see your family here with you. I appreciate your background as an entrepreneur and a small business person and the job creation that you've done. Um, some concerns I have are about the potential impact of ESG policies on small businesses, which I think they could increase costs, um, regulatory burdens for hardworking entrepreneurs. I think these policies are often based on misguided science and driven by political ideology rather than sound economic principles. So could you talk to us a bit about your views on ESG and how you believe the government should approach this issue in regards to small business in particular? Senator, th thank you for that question. Um, you know, the way I look at this role and the agency's mission is to support small businesses. Um, I will always optimize for that. Um, you know, there is clearly uh, an equity lens we need to have. And the equity lens is also about serving the uh, underserved businesses. Those are both about the regions, whether it's rural uh, parts of the country or certain communities. But at the end of the day, the, uh, we are focusing on ensuring that we are helping small businesses succeed. That, it, that is where I would always optimize for uh, working, working with the administrator. So let me follow up on that. When you talk about equity or, or equality, I don't want to conflate the two. They're very different linguistically. But are you talking about equality of opportunity or equality of outcome? What I'm referring to, Senator, is that um, everybody has a fair shot at succeeding. You know, we want to make sure that a rural business in North Carolina has as much access to the opportunity to, let's say, work, work with us on our programs um, as a business uh, in the DMV area. I, I was earlier in my statement referring to the fact that you know, I spend most of my time in San Francisco Bay Area. If you drive three hours south of San Francisco, you go to Fresno, uh, that place looks very different from Silicon Valley. And why is that? We gotta close that gap. That's a rural part of our state. A third of our state is Central Valley. And so I feel very passionate that we gotta make sure that when you go outside the metro regions, you gotta you know, help them rise. And there is just so much uh, opportunity for potential for us to get those businesses off the ground. So, so my view of equity is not just uh, obviously communities, minority and brown, and brown, black and brown communities, but also rural regions, veteran-owned businesses, women-owned businesses. Today is International Women's Day. We still have some ways to go to support women-owned businesses. So, so that's a much broader view. Uh, we are a diverse country, and we got to take care of, make sure all boards rise. Thank you. I want to shift gears. Uh, I think the chair and the ranking member have both mentioned the concerns with fraud. Uh, that's especially the one that's that's been reported with many of the SBA's lending programs, in particular the COVID era programs like PPP or EIDL or EIDL. Um, a May 2022 OIG report found more than 70,000 loans totaling more than $4.6 billion in potentially fraudulent PPP loans. Uh, the IG also found SBA did not have an organizational structure with clearly defined roles, responsibilities, and processes to manage and handle potentially fraudulent PPP loans, nor did they establish a sufficient fraud risk framework. A more recent estimate found that 1.4 million PPP loans totaling over $64 billion were likely fraudulent. A huge amount of dollars. Meanwhile, the SBA continues to move forward with proposed rules that would remove prudent underwriting standards, including weakening affiliation rules around the SBA 7A loan. Uh, Mr. Syed, will you commit to work on rescinding the current lending proposed rules and ensure that adequate guardrails are in place to prevent future fraud and risky loans in SBA's core lending programs? Senator, as I said earlier, in response to Senator Ernst's um, questions, I am um, committed to ensuring that we do everything in our power to fight fraud. Uh, it is unacceptable that so much of the public resource is, is not going to the deserving folks. Um, I'm not in the job yet. I, if I'm confirmed, I look forward to actually evaluating, studying these things, understanding where we can improve things. I know the administrator has put in place uh, you know, more, more anti-fraud measures, but there could be more opportunities for us to do better. So that's what I will, I will commit to you. Um, obviously, we look forward to addressing the IG concerns, again, if I'm confirmed. As I mentioned earlier, um, as a businessman who has often run consumer businesses, I have zero tolerance uh, for fraud. It, it's just something we can do better. Uh, there's role of technology, there's role of processes, workflows. Um, and again, this agency had to stand up at a pretty difficult time, and we can certainly evaluate where we can do better. Thank you. 